Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to get started, please. First off, good evening. My name is Jay Rosen, Director of the International Program in Conflict Resolution and Mediation here at Tel Aviv University. Along with my colleagues at UN Watch and the International MA in Middle Eastern Studies here at Tel Aviv University, we welcome you tonight to tonight's guest lecture with uh, Mr. Michael Nabil. Uh, just a brief background, the International Program is a one-year interdisciplinary graduate degree which seeks to give its students the academic and practical skills needed for conflict resolution in the international arena. While studying here in Israel, as we like to call it, the, the Silicon Valley of conflict resolution. It's only fitting that our program's uh, main graphic, our main picture, uh, is Egyptian President Anwar Sadat addressing the Israel's uh, Knesset uh, with regards to tonight's speaker. Uh, to introduce Mr. Nabil, Welcome and pleasure to call up to the stage uh, Mr. Hillel Neuer, Executive Director of UN Watch. Well. Thank you, Jay. Uh, it's a pleasure for UN Watch to be co-hosting this evening's event and to be organizing Michael Nabil's first peace-building mission to Israel. I also want to uh, thank uh, Elisa Inbal, who uh, helped make the connection uh, to the Conflict Resolution Program and help uh, enable tonight's event. Uh, a word about UN Watch, and I want to give uh, an opportunity for the students here. UN Watch is a human rights NGO based in Geneva, Switzerland. We monitor the UN. We try to get it to do its job in upholding human rights. We bring victims to speak, political prisoners such as Michael, who testified last year before the United Nations. We're also active on issues affecting Israel and anti-Semitism, demanding that the UN adopt a balanced approach to the Middle East. And um, we have opportunities for students. Uh, we have interns all the time. It's a terrific opportunity. So those of you who are interested uh, in having an amazing internship at the United Nations working with UN Watch, go visit our website, unwatch.org. I also want to acknowledge other people who have assisted in uh, Michael's visit, uh, Dr. Nir Bombs, uh, who's uh, always present when anything is important is happening with human rights around the world, uh, who's assisted us enormously in Michael's trip. And I also want to acknowledge uh, Celia Mishonik, our Chair of International Outreach, who's been a terrific supporter together with her husband Jackie, uh, an activist for the work of UN Watch, and will be able to host Michael uh, at another event uh, this week. Um, uh, finally, I want to thank Masha koski sachs our research fellow here in Israel, who has worked tirelessly and diligently to put together a superb program for Michael where he's got to visit uh, MKs from across the spectrum, the foreign ministry, Ramallah, all kinds of uh, peace activists, uh, and to lecture here and elsewhere. Uh, one year ago, our speaker was behind bars, sitting in an Egyptian prison, condemned to a three-year prison sentence, although he had done nothing wrong. His crime technically was insulting the military, and the reason that the powers that be didn't like Michael, the reason why Michael bothered the powers that be was because he spoke out. He spoke out for human rights for the Egyptian people, he spoke out for freedom of association, freedom of speech, all the universal human rights guaranteed under international law, instruments to which Egypt was a signatory, Michael demanded that his government uphold those basic standards. And they didn't like that. He spoke for democracy, for free and fair elections. They didn't like that. He also did something that really upset them, which was that during the revolution in Tahrir Square, which Michael was deeply involved with, many people had said in Egypt that the people shooting them, the people trying to beat them, were the police. Uh, the regime, but not the army. The army, as you recall, stood there and many people said the army is not attacking us. The army and the people are one hand. That was the expression that was often heard. The army and the people are one hand. And Michael said, no, the army and the people are not one hand. The army is behind many of the atrocities that are being committed against the freedom fighters in Tahrir Square. And he proved it with photos and, and other data, videos. He documented it in detail on his blog how the army was against the revolution, how the army was committing massive human rights abuses. And that did it. And that put him in prison. And it was 
uh, one year ago when Michael was still in prison that uh, we were approached. Professor Erwin Kotler, Canada's former Minister of Justice, an international human rights advocate who was representing Michael as his international lawyer, approached our organization, UN Watch, and asked us to speak out for Michael. And, uh, and we did so. We gathered 30 NGOs, we made statements, we petitioned the UN, we petitioned the Egyptian government, we got it covered in the Egyptian press and Le Monde and internationally. And through the actions of many people around the world, Amnesty International, which uh, made Michael, recognized him as a prisoner of conscience, did enormous work, and many, many others around the world. And the pressure led to him being released uh, less than a year ago, uh, in January, uh, towards the end of January last year. And uh, one of my colleagues had the idea to invite Michael to our annual Human Rights Conference, the Geneva Summit for Human Rights, which we hold every year. Those who are interested, it's February 19th in Geneva, which we do together with 20 other NGOs. And someone said, we need to invite Michael. He was just released from prison. And I said, he'll, he'll never come. He's such a famous guy. You can see photos of dozens of microphones that were in front of him when he was released. Amnesty International, prisoner of conscience, covered in all the major papers. And somehow we got to him, and within about six weeks' time, he came. Uh, addressed our Geneva summit, uh, headlined the event. He got to testify before the United Nations Human Rights Council, a place that is supposed to speak out for human rights, but for the most part ignores many situations. Egypt was never addressed ever at the United Nations Human Rights Council. On the contrary, Egypt was often the champion of human rights resolutions. Uh, and then Michael uh, approached us several months ago. He's now a student in Germany, studying public policy, doing a master's there, with the dream of returning to Egypt and taking part in reforming that society. And he approached us and asked if we would organize a peace-building mission to Israel in the footsteps of Anwar Sadat. Uh, and, and that's what he's been doing the past two weeks here in Israel. And it's been an extraordinary visit. Um, and, uh, and he's had a dialogue with sectors from across Israeli society and with Palestinian society as well. So we're really excited and thrilled that, uh, Michael, you're here to address the students of Tel Aviv University. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for coming.